morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told out of voice for radio. So today, we are going to continue our look, finish our look, in fact, at Miracle Twin. I've shown you basically all the cards in the set, but there are five cards in the set that I, even with all of my enthusiasm, joy, and love for the Pokemon TCG, just cannot find particularly good stuff to say about. These aren't bad cards, ladies and gentlemen. These are just cards that are a bit... Eh. So we've got five of them to go through, so let's get rolling, starting off with Yanmega. It's a Yanmega that doesn't have free retreat. That doesn't make me happy. It is weak to fire that with cards like Welder is now the best type in the format. That doesn't make me happy. And the attacks are just meh. Double colorless energy, 50 damage. Free energy, 100 damage. Now, the good news is you can use triple acceleration energy here. But then if you're going to put a triple acceleration energy on a stage one, how about Dugong? that does 60 to each of two Pokemon. How about something like an Aerodactyl that does 180 damage? Sorry, Amega. I just, I love the colorless energy. I do. I do love the colorless energy. But so many Amega have free retreat and this one doesn't. And the attacks are just superbly underwhelming. Even with triple acceleration energy, this doesn't make me go, ooh, 100 damage. This makes me go... Well, there are better Pokemon on which to put your triple acceleration energy. Maybe if you really want to hit for grass weakness, but having said that, in a format without choice band, you're not going to be one hit KOing grass weak tag team GXs. So I'm still just a bit meh. But maybe we can find some more to love with Galvantula. Galvantula, 90 HP is fine. Weakness to fighting is not. It means that Boswell with Diancy Prism Star, a very widely played combination, will get a fairly easy, straightforward one hit KO on you. And it's got one attack for one colorless energy. And it does 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. The thing is, we, we want to do 60 damage. We want to do 60 damage to one of our opponent's Pokemon. Because if your opponent's got a Ditto Prism Star on the bench, yay, that's going to be gone. But something like an Inkay won't be gone. Something like a Zorua won't be gone. And that's before we get to stuff like Poipole that have 70 HP. And it's just not doing enough. And I mentioned it earlier, but we've got Dugong that as a stage one can do 60 damage to two bench Pokemon. And look, I know that Galvantula does it for one colorless energy, whereas Dugong takes three, but Dugong can use triple acceleration energy. And triple acceleration energy is good, ladies and gentlemen. Triple acceleration energy makes us extremely happy. It's a single attachment. I'm not saying that this is bad and most cards don't hit 50 damage to the bench. But I am saying that I'm not seeing a huge amount of use for it. And here's the thing, right? It's a lightning Pokemon. But there's no point using Thunder Mountain because you're not using any lightning energy to attack. Or I should say, there's no lightning energy in your stated attack cost. So that's not going to be particularly helpful. And Tapu Koko Prism Star can accelerate an energy to you. But Tapu Koko Prism Star gets lost zoned and puts one energy onto each of two bench Pokemon. You need better Pokemon here. We can do better than Galvantula. Now you can use Electro Power to hit the active. And this is an attack that can hit the active. I should mention all of our translations here come from the lovely Joe over at Cerebi.net. But even then, Zapdos... How is this any better than Zapdos, which is a basic Pokemon, hits for more damage, has more HP, has a better resistance, etc., etc.? I don't see any reason you'd want to play this over Zapdos. And I'm not down on Galvantula. I have many spiders in my house. And I was quite a fan of the Galvantula from Steam Siege, which was both lightning and grass type. And could do 30 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon, applying weakness and resistance for the bench. That was a good sniping attack. This is not, ladies and gentlemen. It really isn't. And I hate to say it, 
But I'm also going to have to put Relicanth on this list. And look, ladies and gentlemen, I adore Relicanth as a Pokemon. Relicanth has given rise to one of my favorite artworks in the entire history of the Pokemon TCG. The one from Call of Legends is beautiful. This is not a good card. Now, it is a fighting type, which means weakness on stuff like Pikachu and Zekrom. And it means Diancy Prism Star to do a little bit of extra damage. And it means Brooklet Hill to go and search it out, though that will rotate as it becomes legal. Eh, maybe not the best point. But firstly, 90 HP is uninspiring. And secondly, we've just got fairly rubbish attacks. The second attack for two colorless energy does 30 damage and confusion. But this is going to be in a format where we don't have double colorless energy. So use Zerkatry. Zerkatry does 20 in confusion for one energy on a basic. And it has more HP. Yes, I know Relicamp's a basic as well. And it's got the same retreat cost. And it's got a better other attack. It's just an all-round better card, to be frank, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not loving Relicamp. There is a first attack here. And the first attack is a bit more interesting. The first attack for one colorless energy. Search your deck for a trainer card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck. It's fine. But it's not terribly inspiring. Because the thing is, you're not doing any damage. Now, if you go second on turn one, I don't hate this. Because you can search for something like a Cynthia if you don't already have it in hand. You can go for a Green's Exploration if you've got no Pokemon with abilities down, etc. But really, you want to be attacking. There are so many Pokemon that on turn one can do great things. Zapdos comes in doing 80 damage. Something like a Lolan Vulpix, yes, it's worth giving up an attack to get two Pokemon out. But you're not doing that here. And sure, you can go and search for a couple of item cards to get you a couple of Pokemon. But then you're thinning out your deck as well in a way you might not want to in the early game. I don't hate this for the first attack. I think the first attack here is fine. The problem is the first attack here is fine. It's not good. It's not impressive. It's not exciting. It's fine. But really, you're using this in a situation where you've got nothing else and you're panicking. It's not a reason to play this as a cornerstone of your deck. And finally here, we need to have a little bit of a look at Tauros. And pre-rotation... I could make an argument for Tauros. Post-rotation, I cannot make much of an argument for Tauros. I will say that with 110 HP, it will survive a hit from Boswell, even with Diancy Prism Star out. Um, what else? Uh, it's got a retreat cost of 1, so Acrobike gives it free retreat. Woo! No, wait, sorry, not Acrobike. A skateboard. There we go. Still woo, still good. And, I mean, look, the thing I would like about this is 2 energy, 60 damage, plus 10 to yourself. Now, in a format with double colorless energy, you can use this to knock out those 60 HP Pokemon like Inkay that I mentioned before. And just, you go second, on turn 1, start taking KOs. Which, incidentally, is what... Tauros GX did, though Tauros GX didn't do 10 to itself when it did 60, this unfortunately does, boo hiss etc. But all of this is a moot point because we've not got double colourless energy. And the card we're really having as a replacement is one I've mentioned already, it's triple acceleration energy. But that's only for evolved Pokemon. So Tauros here, you've got to attach twice, or use something like Welder, in order to do 60 damage. It's not good enough. Now, in a pre-release, I can see an argument for this as a fairly beefy basic Pokemon. And it's got a really nice first attack for one colorless energy. Search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon, put them onto your bench, then shuffle your deck. But if you want a Pokemon that's going to get your basics out, play the Dunsparce from Celestial Storm. Because the Dunsparce for one colorless energy gets free Pokemon... And you may switch to the bench in place of one of your bench if you wish. And then you can paralyze on a coin flip on a second attack in an emergency. So if you're playing this for Call for Family, don't play this. Play Dunsparce. It's not rotating. If you're playing it for the second attack, 
It's too energy. It's not good enough. With double colorless energy for knocking out basics before your opponents had a chance to attack, it's a decent card going second. Outside of that, it's not. Also, I think I said five Pokemon at the beginning of the video. I meant four. I'm not offended by any of these Pokemon. None of these Pokemon make me want to quit the game. They're just underwhelming. They're just not giving me any reason to play them over similar Pokemon. And for that reason, they don't get their own video. They get to end my look at Miracle Twin. Yay! But that's about all they get. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. These are the four cards from the set, which frankly do not excite me. I'm sorry, but I'm an honest dude. That tells the luck sees it. But maybe you guys can find a better use for them than I can. Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash plays where we talk about games that don't even have pokemon in but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.